Hi, it's Lily. Today I'm going to share with you how I made the outdoor scenery for my latest stop motion animation called Happy or Alone. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to put the link above and in the description below. The whole set is modular. I like to be able to separate this into sections because this is for stop motion animation, so I need much more flexibility for shooting the animation. It's the first time that I tackle an outdoor scenery like this. So before doing it, I've done my homework, which is basically watching tons of tutorials. You might already know about Luke Toen, Geek Gaming Scenics, Hi Eye Workshop, Miskas, and so many others. If you don't, I really recommend having a look at their channels. They have some amazing tutorials and I really enjoy how they explain their processes and how they create some amazing things. So in this tutorial, I will share with you some of the latest techniques that I've learned, but also some experimentation of mine, because that's just more fun when you try new things. And I hope you enjoy it. To create the whole outdoor scenery, I spent at least 140 or 150 hours, most of it and by far is for making the trees by hand and from scratch. There are many techniques out there that exist, but for my application for stop motion animation, I work on a bigger scale than most of the diorama that exists. My scale is always one tenth, which is quite big. Personally, I decide to work with polymer clay to create those trees. That's what I enjoy working with the most. The polymer clay imply cooking it, so the first thing I did is go and measure my oven. It was 43 cm wide and that's not the 50 cm plus that I wanted my trees to be in, so I knew I had to do lots of cheating. For my first tree, the one you see there, I knew I wanted to have those exposed roots, so for that I create a special kind of base. I've used some leftover oak and some bit of timber and create a platform. I've also used a piece of basil wood above it. I cut the basil wood to round it up, done a bit of sanding, it doesn't need to be perfect. Once you have a rough rounded shape, that will work just fine. Then I drill and screw into my base to attach this piece of basil wood. You notice that I didn't glue it because it was meant to go to the oven and the super glue will have released some fumes, so everything needs to be screwed down. I've also screwed the little side button. And then I drill into the main basil wood all the way through and then added smaller screws closer to this opening and you will see the reason why very soon. To create those trees you need some florist wire in large quantity. I've ordered tons of it but it didn't arrive on time so I decided you know what I'm gonna work and start with whatever I've got which is basically every bit of wire around my workshop. I didn't plan initially to create a rainbow tree but it's kind of cute at the end of the day. Once I have a big volume out of it I remove the clamp and the timber that I use to just hold it in place and start bending what is gonna be the trunk. I needed more volume on it so I've added some aluminum foil and wrap it up with wire and then I start to shape my trees. So I took the smaller branch first, twist them, then separate into two sections, keep twisting them and separating them again. And you just keep going like this for a long time until all the branches start to come to life. And I kept shaping them and cut the excess wire. Now I've got a piece of cardboard of the size of my oven, so I have a reference of what size I'm supposed to achieve, but I knew that my tree would be a bit taller than that. I wrapped up some wire in the center of my tree and passed them through the hole of my platform. And then underneath, I separate them and stretch them as much as I can so I can attach them around the screws. Then I put it back up, cut the wire in half and start shaping the roots the same way I was shaping the branch. And I kept going until I had a nice overall shape that I was happy with. I've placed it next to my cottage because I needed to make sure it makes sense with the volume and proportion of the cottage as well. I've covered the whole thing with some brown FIMO. I've decided to add a bit of Super Scopy as well to make it even softer and easier to scope with, but just normal FIMO will do the job fine. So I mix it up with the pasta machine to prep it and then I cover the whole tree with it. So I've tried to make sure that I cover every bit of aluminum foil, every bit of wire, same for the roots and every single branches. And then I start to add some volume because no trees is just straight like that. You just need to add some shape overall to bring it to life so it's got some movement to it. Then I got those old tree bark silicone pad that I bought years ago in a baking shop. So you can find it these days much more easily online. 
that will save you hours or even days if you make lots of trees out of it. As you can see, you just press it against the clay and you have some really cool texture that come out of it. If you cut it in half, that means you can just press it and apply texture on either side at the same time. I've also cut some small bits of this pad to be able to go in between the branches. Overall, it took me probably an hour to apply the texture throughout. So if you're thinking about mass production, invest into a texture pad. Then to cook it, I needed my tree to go horizontal. To do that, I took a bit of timber, add some metal brackets, then connect it to the main platform, add a thicker piece of wire above it to be able to support the main weight of the tree. It took a bit of adjustment until I had a nice fit and a stable base. So now you can see the size of the cardboard, which is supposed to be my oven. The trees is clearly a bit taller than that, so that's where the heavy cheating starts to happen. So just before cooking, I bend over the top branches. And I know you're not supposed to do that, it's not going to like it, but that's the only way you're going to keep the height and bring it back later on. So I very, very carefully place it into my oven with a bit of adjustment, and I was just so relieved once it was in there. Then after cooking for half an hour, when it was still warm, I very gently pressed the branches back up. It didn't like it, it started to crack, but I knew I can fix it easily, so it wasn't the end of the world. Then I took some miliput, it's a two-part epoxy putty, mix it up together. I start to fill up the cracks, and I've also fill up the mark that the thicker wire has slowly dig into the clay when it was cooking. I've mixed more epoxy putty that I needed because I knew I can create some boulders out of it that will be useful later on and I've just added a bit of texture with some aluminium foil. Once that was dry I can easily paint it and blend it in. Then I've started to add lots of different colors, probably five of them at least, with a sponge. I went in between the branches which was a bit tight so what I did is use a pencil and attach a bit of a stipple sponge at the end of it so I was able to reach in between the branches with that. Then I've done dirty wash, apply some diluted brown paint, removing the excess with a paper towel and done some dry brushing with a light beige and I think it really brings it to life when you mix those colors up. Now to create some foliage, I've ordered some sea foam and some turf. I've ordered everything from Model Scenery Supplies. They don't sponsor this video, but I discovered this shop last time I did my gothic chairs and I was so impressed with the range of materials they have and I thought I'm gonna order from them again and I was really pleased as well. Then I cut the sea foam into tiny branches and super glued them to the main tree. Now if you have one of those Matterborn super glue with a kicker, that will save you not only a huge amount of time but your sanity because applying the sea foam the whole tree took me four to five hours. I didn't realize how long it would take. So it's a very slow process. I kept at it until I had the whole tree covered and sometimes the super glue turned a bit white so you can just touch it up with a bit of brown paint and then I went outside and started to work on the foliage. So I covered the trunk with some cling film to protect it and start spraying some scenic glue throughout the branches and then apply a bit of the dark turf first. Then I've done another round adding some glue and went for another coat with the lighter turf. It's always best to have a mix of colors. If you look around in nature, the trees have a whole different shades of colors to them. Once the whole glue was dry, to finish up and remove the tackiness, I spray some clear matte varnish. It will also seal the whole thing and hold the foliage in place. So this first tree was lovely, but it took me two to three days. So I knew I had to ramp up the speed of my mass production. I've created a better system with clamps to shape and cut my wire to size. I went quicker as well with the sculpting of the trees. I discovered little tricks such as if you apply one of those little texture pad onto the thick wire before cooking it, you end up not having the dent, so it's one less thing to fix later on. Also, if you create a few of them and paint them in a row, you will save some time that way. When it comes to the sea foam, I wanted to as well use it to create some bushes. And for that, I took a piece of plywood, drill into it, and place the tallest sea foam into it. I give it a quick spray with some acrylic brown paint. Then I've done the turfing, the same thing as well. Apply some glue, apply some turf, apply some glue again, and turf it back in. And it was really important for me to create 
different colors, different shades, as you can see, different height as well. It's all about creative and diversity. It's easier later on to work with it when you have a whole range of options. Up to the tiniest bit, you'll be surprised the difference of having just a different size and a completely different color to work with. So I needed lots of trees to create this whole scenery, but applying the sea foam in particular took absolutely forever. So I decided to use an alternative method. For the trees that you see the most, I've used the sea foam method. And for the trees that are at the back, I've used a much quicker method. That involved using some glue sticks in green and some moss. So I did a little caution of moss, applying some hot glue in the middle of it and just wrap them around the wire. If you look at the different trees, on the right you have the sea foam, that looks much better, completely agree. On the left you have the one with the moss, it looks very different, but it's four hours less of work. So yes, it is quite a big gap. A major thing that I've noticed with moss is that the colors tend to be a bit fluorescent. So the way to fix this is to use some turf. So the same thing than before, apply some spray, apply some turf, and it can really turn some colors down. So now I'm going to talk about the base. I positioned my cottage on a piece of plywood. This was 1200 by 600, I think. I added lots of bits of leftover wood and placed it all around the cottage to get a sense of how it's gonna look. Once I was happy with the position of it and the layout, then I remove all the bits of wood, mark up with a permanent marker all around the cottage, and then I cut it with the jigsaw. I've also cut some studs. Initially, I placed four studs in position. I later on had to add some stud in between to hold it because it started to get really heavy. The plywood I used was nine millimeter thick, which is what I had, but I probably recommend going thicker, at least 12 millimeter thick. You need some proper strength because of all the weight that's gonna come on top of it. Then I just lined up the studs, used the nail gun to hold it in place. I've cut another piece to get at the back. I wanted it to be raised, so I've cut some small studs and took some leftover of plywood to get above the studs and then nail everything in place. Then I've placed my base all around the cottage, make sure it was a nice fit, same for the back part. I've positioned my trees onto it, start to get a sense of how everything is going to look and try to understand where I wanted my volume to be in terms of the landscaping. I mark up with a pencil where my path will be, where my bench will be, so start to design a little bit more the layout. I know the material of choice when it comes to create diorama is usually foam. I didn't have any, but what I had is cardboard in large quantities, so I decided to work with that. I made some sandwiches of cardboard with the hot glue gun, and then I used an old plastering saw which has proper teeth, so that's really good to work with it, and cut it in random curved pieces at an angle. And as you can see, I create those little components that are very modular, so I can just position in place, realize, you know what, it needs to be more trimming, cutting, once I was happy with the initial volume, I hot glue them to the board. Any of course will be reused, stuck back in somewhere else. Once I was happy with that, I took some more cardboard and hot glue it in between the board and those masks to make sure I fill the gap and start smoothing the whole surface. At that stage, I placed it around the cottage to make sure it makes sense with the volume and the layout with the cottage in it. Then I covered the whole thing with duct tape, placed my tree in position and marked it up with a permanent marker. Then I worked with Scoltamol. I used at least two bags of it for the whole thing. I mixed it up with water, started applying it to cover the whole surface, and smoothed it up with my fingers. I wrapped up the trunk of my trees with cling field to protect them and then temporarily position them in place, shape the scotum mold against the tree and then I remove it because it's just easier to work with the whole landscape without the trees in the way. The main tree that stay in position is my first one because I had those roots sticking out and I wanted to have a nice clean scotum mold shape around it. Every other tree was temporarily removed. I've also done some side bits which are modular and are very handy for stop motion animation following the same principle, ply, studs, uh, cardboard mass, duct tape and sculpt mold. Now to create some rocks, I've created some little mold out of aluminium foil. So I took some thick aluminium foil, fold it in half, crumple it and then reopen it and shape the edges to create a little mold. 
Then I pour some plaster into it, let it set, and then once it was completely set, I can remove the aluminium foil and have some nice interesting shape. I've also applied some plaster on a baking sheet at different thicknesses and once it was completely set I hammer it down into smaller chunks. Now going back to my main board I decided at the back of the cottage it's going to be easier if I create a little platform and then place my trees on top of this little platform. That means I'm going to have more flexibility, they are not set in place. So if I position my camera for the shoot and realize oh, I, I wish the tree was just more to the right or to the left, I can still adjust them. Then I wrapped up my tree with cling film to protect it, done a very light sanding here and there and start to work on adding rocks. First I apply a good coat of Mod Podge, then I place my chunk of plaster. First I use the bigger chunk, then getting smaller and smaller. I've also added the boulder out of epoxy putty that I've done earlier. Then I cover with another coat of Mod Podge and finally add the thinner parts of plaster. Then I took some soil from the garden and pass it through a strainer. I use some leftover grout and I mix it up with soil, very roughly half-half. Then I pour everything into a plastic container, cover it with some tights. Then I add a good layer of Mod Podge throughout and shake my little dust all around it to add some texture. Now for the path, I should have vacuumed the dust first, but I end up mixing it up with the Mod Podge so it didn't make any difference anyway. Then I've added some big stone first then medium stone, then tiny stones, and to finish off I use some bit of sand that I've passed it through a makeshift strainer. Then to seal the whole thing I've done some mixes. I've reused some old bottle from cleaning products and mixed some Mod Podge and water. When I did my research online some people say you mix one part Mod Podge to three part water or two part water or one part water and I decided to meet halfway. So I mixed one part Mod Podge mats and two parts water. And then with a different container I've mixed some isopropyl alcohol with water. This time it was half and half one part isopropyl alcohol, one part water. Then I've got my little mixes ready. First I use the mix with isopropyl alcohol throughout and then I cover the whole thing with the Mod Podge mix and I let it dry overnight. When it was completely dry I can start the painting. First I painted in grey the path and the stones. I painted everything else in brown. I've added different shade on the path with a sponge. I've done a dirty wash on the path with some diluted brown paint, removing the excess with wet paper towel. Then I've done a first dry brush with some light beige and then a top dry brush with just a tiny bit of white. For the rocks I've done the same thing, diluted brown paint, remove the excess with wet paper towel, first dry brush in light beige, second in white. Now I'm going to talk about the grass. I went back to Model Scenery Supplies and bought a grass applicator and a mix of static grass in different height, different colors to just mix it up. It was also the first time ever I tried these things so I thought oh, I'm gonna play around a bit. I mixed up a batch inside of the container, add some patches of thick grass glue and then I start to apply the grass. The first time ever I was doing some tests with this grass applicator, at first it didn't work out and I was frustrated with it until I realized the trick. I've added a bit of wire to extend the clamp and then I went really tight over it, really close, and it ended up working like this. So if it's the first time you try static grass and it didn't work out, just be patient. Honestly, once it works, it's brilliant. It's a fantastic tool. Now I vacuumed the excess and placed a tight around the vacuum so I make sure I can reuse everything that I just removed and do it again, working patches and work with different colors and different heights of grass as well throughout. It's what creates the most realistic look to mix it up can add some dead leaf, some soil, just a mix of different colors to avoid just a blend one color feel to it. Nature is never as bland as that. Before I worked on the main set, I initially tested out on the side bits. That way I can make all my mistakes there. As you see, it's really patchy. So I've learned that way what works and what doesn't before tackling the main board. I've also made some tiny tuft with a bit of grass glue and the grass applicator on top of it. 
I've decided to add a bit of moss on top of some of the boulders, add a bit of grass glue, a bit of turf around it. And I've also used my little handmade tuft to add some colors. Then I was ready to hot glue the trees in place and cover all the edges with a bit more glue, a bit more tuft. Now when I come to the flower beds against the cottage, I took some tiny branches, cut them to the same height, roughly 20 mil, then saw them in half. Then I used a hot glue gun on the baking paper to glue them against each other. And once it was completely cold, I can remove it and then do some trimming until it was a nice fit. Then use the hot glue gun to seal it in place. And to blend everything in, I always add a bit of glue and a mix which become my favorite mix, the ground cover soul pine forest, which is just a perfect blend of green and brown to blend the borders. And I use that mix a bit everywhere. So now for the sea foam, I had a variety of height, colors, shapes so I can start really building something interesting with that even using the sea foam as it is without any turf on it you can also buy some bushes already made you can save some time but they're not as high as the other ones and then I start to assemble everything so first I drill into it the, before realizing the drill bit was too big so I had a big hole and even though I put lots of glue I needed to fill that hole and then next took a drill bit just a tiny bit thinner so it was a better match start building it up adding some moss, adding some turf. Keep going with the main board as well and make sure I had a mixture of colors, shape and layers. I've also bought those adorable colorful tuft at seriousplay.co.uk. You can make them yourself, but those one looks probably better and definitely quicker. So I really enjoy working with them. For the flower beds, I start placing them up. They have a backing that is sticky, so might as well hold, but I wanted to make sure. So I've added a bit of glue as extra and just adding a bit of color into the grass is perfect to break that green. It really adds lots of character to it. I've also added all my little makeshift tuft on the path and just kept building until I was happy, until you had character. I tried to make sure to, to cover the edges. I was worried about it showing when I was shooting the animation. And you remember those tiny little ones that I've done with a different color, that helps as well, giving even more character. Finally, I sealed the whole thing with a mix of isopropyl alcohol water and the second one with a Mod Podge water and let this dry overnight. Now for the little bench, I've used some balsa woods in 3 mil and 5 mil thick and I've super glued all my components together, make it sturdy. I've added some grain with the stainless knife and this is what it looked like before I painted and aged it. I've also done a tiny log shed, which is super cute. For the top of it, I've used a bit of cardboard and once it's painted and aged, it looks like a nice piece of old corrugated metal. On the side of the building, I wanted to add a bit of wisteria. So I've used some miniature vine. The only one I had left was the dry vine. To bring it back to life a bit, I've sprayed it in green, but looking back, it probably wasn't necessary because the branches of the wisteria are supposed to be brown. What made a difference is to add some green leaf to it. By then I ran out of every single spray glue. So I end up using some spray mount and it just worked as well. So I was <laughs> glad it worked. So I've added my little leaves to it, stretch it and let it dry completely before seal it with a clear matte varnish. Then I've positioned in place and super glue against the building. I had those little lavender flower from uh, Sirius Plate of UK and I thought they were going to be a perfect match for my wisteria. So I've placed two or three at the time with the super glue and took my time to build it up. Now I needed to have a backdrop behind my set. So I used the biggest piece of card I can find in my local art store, which is A1. And this card is like two millimeter thick. I bought four of them. I've duct taped two of them together to create the main part at the back. The other one will be separate for each side and start building up my color with a sponge and some very light blue and slowly build up the colors. I've added some brown some green, and it's probably best to do all the boards at once, otherwise you're gonna to struggle to match the color later on. Now 
I've added some trunk. Blend them in with a sponge. I've tried to apply lots of different tones, but by the time it was drying, it seems to have blended in, but I thought, okay, you know what? I'm gonna fix it later. First, I want to make the board stable. So for that, I've used some old packaging and cardboard, but you can use any piece of timber that will do just fine and duct tape in place. And I've done the same for every piece of card. So as you can see, once it's assembled, I have the main central part that is held on the C stand, and then I've placed sideboard against it and hold them very professionally in place with a bit of duct tape. And it's only once everything was assembled that I realized, okay, I need to add some lighter colors, some lighter greens, and even beige into the trees to adjust everything so it's more harmonious. And there you have it. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it gives you inspiration for your own project to create something amazing. And next time I'm going to show you how I made the little puppets from scratch and by hand as usual. Take care.